Right, we've got a fun day today. First up, we need to get ready to do some strimming. Then we're gonna be trying to move the chassis and we're gonna move the sheep, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's get stuck in. Right, bit of an explainer as we go down. So while we've got the sheep, they're, well, they're busy enough on the grass as it is. It means that any of the rough ground, which is, they probably would do an okay job at it. Any of the rough ground um, is just gonna get away from us. It's too steep and rough for the tractor. Uh, the pigs are busy enough doing other clearance jobs and we are yet to get goats. That is the plan at some point, but until such time, it's one man and his brush cutter. So I guess we just start here and work up. Well, that probably wasn't quite the dramatic time lapse that you were hoping for. I was basically going as far as I could on the fuel I had. So I actually left that centre patch up there because it's just mainly grass, so I'm not going to clear it out for no reason. And then I concentrated on the fence line at the top all the way along to that little elder tree up there. Before you say, why didn't I use the tractor? It's just there's so many ruts and holes and bits and bobs in there that it could send the tractor over and at least for the first time it made sense to walk it maybe in the future certainly down here we could probably manage especially if we're going up and down the hill rather than across it all right strimming done first move of the day goes bringing around the tractor and uh, hopefully we're going to get these chassis moved where we want them and eventually we need them basically over the other side of all the buildings very first thing we need to do is get these two in position so they're both not in the middle of the yard but also in a position where we can take one off the other enough length between the far end and up here to slide one off the other one there's a few different options there either sliding it off or jacking the top one up and pulling the bottom one out Okay. Can you see those black patches pull off? Yeah! There's a slope here that while the wheels have ended up off the floor, I'm going to take off this one and the other one, which makes it a twin axle, which means we should be able to turn it easier. A 
okay nice and slow you're just going to go forward a little bit because you don't want it well you're going uphill so that's a good thing right we've the tow ball was just a nightmare it was locked on lifting the tractor off the ground and all sorts Yeah, keep going. Keep going, go to the left a bit. I don't know if that'll help. Okay, and stop there. See that? Can you see that? That's how much pressure, when it was on the ball, that's how much. Put that back on the They've all lost there, aren't they? What? See. <laughs> I thought it would have happened if it was me. Here comes the big guns. Wait for it. Oh, I'm not going to do that too, obviously. Mm. We actually want this as short as possible, don't we? We soon realised that no matter how much back and forth and pivoting we did, we were never going to change the direction of it quite enough. So our tactic got a little bit more rough and ready and we decided to try and shunt it across, which worked just fine. And we'll just do a bit of a paint touch up on the chassis. Obviously these are not brakes in any way, these trailers, so if they start moving they can really pick up pace. Hence why having a vehicle either end, one could either act as a dead weight or the other way um, the dumper was at the sacrificial end and it would just slide into that worst comes to worst rather than heading down the fields. Well, I don't know if the time lapse did that much justice. Uh, I think Joe filmed some of it for Instagram, but flip me, that was stressful, wasn't it? Those things, uh, well, there's just a lot of wobbling, well, a lot of forces and a lot of pivoting. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Uh, but we got there in the end. We need to move the fence. We're trying to keep this path that we use to access all the fields and when we go on walks so we need to move this line across but it's not quite so simple well not with this stuff anyway of course our new fencing over there you just wind up and pull out that would have been good but it's only 100 meters and it's not enough for this half of the paddock got another bundle of fence to post nice thing about that trick is well as well as being much cheaper and more kind of adaptable. It gives us a chance to work out where we might want fencing in the future. So we're actually kind of toying with the idea of making a series of nice fenced kind of paddock sections up here. And we can subdivide those up in the future with electric fencing, but it'd be nice to just have a permanent bit of structure, but we don't want to jump to any assumptions that we want them a certain shape or size. And when you think about gates and where we're moving animals, from one to another and things like that. Tilly's just on here, that's just temporary. The pigs are right up on the top there, beyond the silage clamps. They're only up there because that's where we want them to till up our veg area. Whether they're gonna do it in time, I don't know, but that's basically what's happening up there. Then they will be moved. And just like the sheep today and Tilly, we're just gonna move them around the farm. Into you, hey? Well, the new fence is up, the old posts are there, but no one has ventured over. It's been nearly an hour, or maybe not that long, but still. Good sheep, good sheep. 
I'm just gonna drop this. Hopefully, they'll go for it. Go on. Go on, are you gonna be like the pigs and not wanna go over it even though it's lying down? They're wimping out, they can see it on the ground. You just won't go over it. Bring the triplet, the, those two down there. No, I think they all need to come up, but she'll follow. Yep. Oh, there's another strand lying on the floor. We'll have to push him over it. Go on. Is that all of them? Go on, go on. Go. Look, they're jumping over one film. Oh, oh, oh. getting tangled. You're getting tangled. Are you okay? Yeah. Hooray! The <laughs> chief, chief shepherdess. Out for a nice meal. Well, it's hard to remember how tall this was, but I'm pretty sure you couldn't see these nettles before. So I'm hoping rather than just spraying all this, with graze on or whatever and killing it off. I'm hoping that now we've grazed all this, we can bring the topper in, top everything. And by cutting down the nettles again and again, this grass can outcompete it naturally rather than having to use chemicals. You're doing a good job in there. Good grazing girl. There's no electric there now. You're safe. No, no, don't touch the battery. Good girl. Need to get the tractor back through though, don't we? There's three options. One is we're going to get some steels or poles, maybe even here. I'm sure the welds are strong enough. Jack up the top one and prop it and then wheel the bottom one out. But if you saw how uneven the ground is, the bottom one could kick side to side, it could go up and down and it could easily knock one of those jacks or one of those blocks. So the next option is to secure the bottom one in place, block the wheels and unstrap the top one from the bottom one and simply slide it along the steel there's quite a lot of safety because it can't really slide off to the side and we could easily clamp on some stoppers to prevent that from happening and we could slide it so far that it would get to a point where we can put the wheels on and tow the top one off it and then the third suggestion that came up which was kind of a hybrid of both which was to jack the top one up enough to get the wheels on and then lie boards down on here so that we can actually wheel the top one off the bottom one. Problem with that, or even getting round fence posts underneath, is that the top one would probably roll far too quickly and it would be less controlled. Um, even if we can get this one back up high enough to hit this, it's going to be even higher by the time there's any wheels on there. That said, all of today we've been controlling twice the weight, two chassis, so that's probably three tons, whereas it'll only be half of that, obviously. All right, let's see if we can persuade the dog past the soft, fluffy things. Let's go for a walk. Let's go, Maggie. Come on then. My 15-year-old Springer had more energy than you. Get out of the car. Here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Got me too quick. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, come on. This way. 
Let's finish off the day with a quick walk up the hill field. So this is the hill field. Take a look and tell me what you think. It's a nice mixed bunch and it's not too weedy. Well, not from nettles or thistles at least. So there's buttercups and dandelions and stuff in there, but on the whole, I'm hoping it'll be a good enough meadow hay for seeing us through winter. Come on then, Maggie. This is where I cut the grass around the perimeter, just in case we wanted to put electric up here. Well, we've definitely overdone it on chickens until we find some customers. I mean, that is a few days worth, but you forget to pick them up one day and you're snookered. That's more than a box of eggs. Well, there we go. We moved the sheep. We moved the chassis. That was our primary goal. What else did we do? And we strimmed the goat paddock. I'm going to call it the goat paddock because then, you know, it will happen. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to get the chassis actually around this side of the farm once they're split. That, that's this weekend's job. We might have some help with that. Uh, someone's going to come over uh, with a bit of expertise, if I hope, or at least two heads thinking on it. And then we can start building them. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.